Welcome back to the Oral Radio Show with your boy, Coach West. And today we got my man, D.A. Horton, the author of the book, Gospel. And you just heard the song, God's Image, off the album, Gospel, that accompanies the book. Let's go ahead, D.A., and talk about the words behind the G and the O in the gospel acronym as you discuss in the book. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think when we start with the gospel, man, we have to definitely put the focus back on God and take it off of man. And so often in the urban context, man, it, it's a man-centered gospel, and it's not a God-centered gospel. And so by starting at Jump Street, we got to say, look, we all have a creator, and it's not ourselves. And so with that, we've got to understand our relationship to our creator. And so the first thing we got to understand is what separates human beings from all the forms of creation and what separates us is the fact that we were made in the image of God. Now, there's been a lot of false teachers, man. Um, You know, your Kenneth Copeland, your Creflo Dollars, cats that have taken that uh, phrasing made in God's image, and they have then taken it somewhere that is not the original intention of the authors of Scripture. Uh, Obviously, the Holy Spirit didn't inspire them to write it under under the pretense that, yo, man is equal with God. We are lower forms of deity. And uh, so you have false teachers basically say, yeah, we have the God gene inside of us. We can call those things which are not as though they are. And they take Romans 4, 17 out of context, and they give man too much authority, too much credit, even to the point like I've seen Jesse DePlantis talk about it, where, you know, he says, you know, life and death is a power. Whose tongue? Your tongue. You choose when you live. You choose when you die. And basically, God has been lowered. To the, to the standard of a sideline cat that's just like, yo, uh, I'm going to call the play, but you can still pull an audible, like the game is in your hands, and that's not the sovereign God that we see in the scripture. So we have to reintroduce the hood to the reality that we're made in God's image, and all that basically means, man, is that we are to represent God, not replicate God. And, and in the book, I kind of talk about, like, yo, it's kind of like me throwing on a throwback jacket. I like that. And I, I, know, I, <laughs> I know I'm going to get heat for it, but, like, real talk, if I put on a George Brett jersey, and the reason I'm going to get heat for it is because I'm, I'm, I'm a diehard Royals fan. Me and my wife, we love the Royals. Yeah, <laughs> we're, on a, we're on a two-game winning streak right now, man, so I'm feeling good. I feel you, Rep <laughs> But KC. the reality of it is, man, is that, um, you know, if I put on a George Brett jersey, man, that does not make me a Hall of Fame, triple crown, you know, three-time batting average lifetime winner. Like That, that does not make me George Brett. It doesn't even make me a Kansas City Royal. It just means I'm representing my squad. And the reality of it is, is that we are clothed in human flesh, and the reality of that is that God shared with us certain uh, characteristic traits of himself on a finite level that he withheld from all other forms of creation. So what that basically means is this, is that God has given us personality. He's given us rationality. Uh, He's given us spirituality and morality. This is what separates us from every other form of creation. So human beings are the crowning act of God's creation. And so when we restore that rightful image of humanity being the only image bearer of God, then, yo, that, that's why we should not run on, quote, unquote, instincts. That's why we shouldn't act like animals. That's why we shouldn't act as if we don't have the ability to ration and reason and make conscious decisions. That's what the enemy would want us to be. He wants us to act like animals. He wants us to go survival mode, only the strong survive, survival of the fittest in the concrete jungle. He wants us to act that way. But the reality of it is, is that that's not God's design. So we were created in, in God's image, and that's and, and that's you know what we see in the garden, Adam and Eve. And so with that reality takes us to the O, and there was once open fellowship between God and man. And the beautiful thing about open fellowship is, you know, when you look at Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, you know, Moses is writing that. And a piece of what he's saying is that they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Now, what's dope about that is that, yeah, there was a physical reality, but it's also in the Hebrew phrasing that tells us that, yo, they had no fear of being exposed. And this is why I tell cats, can you imagine driving through the hood with no baby mama drama? Can you imagine walking into your auntie's crib or to the or the barbershop or the beauty salon and no drama? Like, can we really imagine that? It's hard to, but the reality of it is, is Adam and Eve were created in God's image. There was no sin, and they had open fellowship with themselves, but also with God. And they kept it 124 hours a day with God and themselves, man. There were no skeletons in the closet. Adam wasn't creeping. Eve wasn't messing around, okay? Adam wasn't on the down low. It was nothing like that. And it was completely pure transparency. And it was a beautiful reality. And so that's what's the gorgeous reality is that God is so holy that that open fellowship all the more highlights his holiness. And and God is like, yo, I'm that dude. And as long as you obey what I tell you, Adam, and he gave him basically two commands. Number one, yo, be fruitful and multiply, you know, be a good steward over everything that I'm making you responsible over. 
That's number one. Number two, man, you can eat from any tree in the garden except for that one joint over there called the tree of knowledge. Like, don't even touch the, don't they even say don't touch it, but that's what Adam told Eve. But he's like, yo, don't eat nothing uh, from that tree. Eat anything else. And so there's two things. Obey this and you live and we continue open fellowship. And don't do that and you're good in regards to don't eat from that tree. And we, we, we keep that open fellowship. So so that's what the G and the O, man. It takes cats like it's like a prequel, man, to the reality that we see today. So we got to tell cats about the throwback history uh, about being made in God's image and that open fellowship that we want to have with them. Cool, cool. So we so the G stands for God's image and the O stands for open fellowship. And remember that we're made in the image of God to represent him and fellowship with him. DA, this is good stuff, man. We're going to go ahead and get into the song Open Fellowship off the album. And we're going to have more from DA when we get back on the Or Radio Show. Man. Amen, bruh. Or radio. <laughs> 